Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the University Webinar Series for Paladin Point of Sale. Today's presentation is going to be on the new purchase order features. And before we jump into that, I just want to uh, show my appreciation for everybody for showing up today, for tuning in, uh, whether you're watching this live or you're tuning in after the fact, we really appreciate it. Love it when you uh, want to learn more and are eager to learn more about Paladin. Uh, this will be recorded, so you can always watch this in the future. If you have any questions, we'll, we'll answer those at the end. So uh, this is a rather short presentation. I'm thinking maybe 10 minutes, 15 on the outside. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So what you're going to learn today is about our new point of uh, uh, purchase order features. You'll discover how to add supplier instructions, create PO reminder notes, create a PO email record, and apply supplier specific cost, which is a pretty cool feature. So let's start off with uh, adding instructions to a purchase order. So these are uh, important. You know, you might want to put some notes on there, some terms, information about who this gets billed to, who the freight gets billed to, how it's shipped, that sort of thing. So you can add these instructions to a purchase order. And there are just really three basic steps in how to set this up. Number one, you set up a default purchase order supplier instructions. So there's a place where you can, in the company tab, where you put all this information. And then secondly, you add PO instructions to a specific supplier. And then third, apply the supplier instructions to a purchase order, and that's it. For the most part, it's automated. The setup is a one-time deal, but then once you set it up, every time you go into a purchase order, it's going to um, apply the notes for that particular supplier. So let's go on to step one, set up PO supplier instructions. So here under the file menu, click setup and go to the company tab. This is in your Paladin application. And scroll to the purchase order pane, which is about three quarters of the way down. And then uh, what you're gonna see there is you're going to see this box that you see on the left here where you have four different payment bill twos, four different bill freight twos, and four different ship vias. So you put all the ones in here that might be applicable to your business. If not all instructions are needed, if you only want one line of each, that's fine. You can leave them blank. After the instructions have been set, scroll down the bottom, click Save, and then restart Paladin. Step two, now you just need to apply those PO instructions to the suppliers, really simple. So you go to the company tab, you go into, uh, well, file setup, sorry. You, have, you don't go to the company tab, you go to file setup supplier tab this time, and then the supplier pane, select the supplier from the list. Once you do, then scroll to the bottom of the pane where it says PO terms. All right, so what you're gonna see is this box on the left, and you're gonna have a drop down on each one of these if you put more than one entry into these, these fields. So you can, you can customize this per supplier. Everyone can have different build to, freight to, ship to type of thing. So go ahead and you're going to apply these to the supplier, and you're gonna go ahead and save that. All right. Let's go to step three. So now that we've won, we've created our, our instructions, we've applied them to the proper suppliers that we wanted to. Now you just go in the purchase order module and you create a new PO. You can either recall a PO or create a new PO, but once you add your items and get ready to confirm and send the PO, it'll first ask you for a PO number. And at that point, you can either put in a PO number of your liking and or you can use the automatic assignment of PO numbers and it will just keep a sequential PO number list for you. To continue on, now you go into the supplier instructions window and the default instructions will be displayed. Now you have an opportunity at this point, if you wanted to change them, you could do that. But the instructions are automatically added based on that particular supplier. And when you recall the purchase order, the instructions will, repair as, will appear as notes on the purchase order. So you can see in this right-hand diagram down below, you see the notes are right there. Now you have an option for a PO reminder note as well. This is kind of slick. When you're at entering a purchase order and confirming a PO, it's going to come up and give you a message that might have additional information on here. 
In this case, it says, remember, minimum invoice amounts $20 and free freight uh, at $500. So this supplier message is very similar to the checkout screen note for customers. This would be the PO message. When you go to send your purchase order, it just pops on the screen until you hit the buy button and then it goes away. So it's really there for the procurement agent or whoever is submitting this order. Now how to create a PO reminder notes, quite simple. You go back to file setup supplier tab and in there, you'll see at the bottom of the screen, it says confirm PO screen note field. So you can just put a note in there, hit save, close and restart Paladin, and it's set forever. So that'll be there and it will come up as a PO note every time you buy from this particular supplier. When you're sending a PO via email, you have an opportunity to either use the default email or you can put in a new email name right there before you send your, uh, be sent before you send your order. Once you click send, email will be sent, a message will appear at the bottom of the email manager window. An email record uh, note is not added if you resend the PO in the receive mode using the reprint PO feature, just an FYI. Now what's nice about this is it records the details of the email in every PO and puts it into a note field. In this case, it puts in the date, the time, the employee ID, first name and last name initial, and the email address. So there's no ambiguity on who sent this purchase order in. It's right there. It tells you the date, the time, when it was sent, who sent it, and the email they sent it to. Really, really good information on a purchase order. Additionally, another feature here is you can apply supplier specific costs on purchase orders. So if you notice in the inventory screen, you have the opportunity to put in a new market cost for each supplier. Pretty nice. So the three simple steps for setting this up and activating this, one, you turn on supplier specific market cost feature. I'll show you how to activate that, it's a one-time thing. Two, you set the market cost and other order data for suppliers. Third, you just apply the supplier cost during the ordering process. So step one, how do you activate the supplier specific cost? Again, go to file, setup, company tab, go to the purchase order, pane, again, again, about three quarters of the way down, and select the use supplier table cost for ordering checkbox, and save it, close the window, and restart Paladin. So you can see in the bottom left-hand corner there, you see a little checkbox, that activates this feature. Now with that feature activated, you're able to go to the uh, supplier or go to the inventory and click on the suppliers module at the bottom, F11. And when doing so, it enables you to edit several of the fields for all of the suppliers. Let's say you have, in this case, a cap threaded gasket and you buy this from three different suppliers. Well, you can have multiple suppliers for this one SKU, each of them with a different cost, order amount, uh, minimum order quantity, and so on. So setting the market cost and other order data for suppliers is again, you just uh, acquire this screen here by bringing, bringing up the inventory module, clicking on the supplier tab, and now it's gonna show you the different suppliers that you buy this product from. In there, you'll see the order number, market cost, order quantity and broken carton, all editable fields. And you can go ahead and make modifications to this. When you're finished adding the market cost and order information as such, you just need to save and close this window. Step three, now you just need to apply the supplier cost during the ordering process. So when you're ordering, there's one of two things that happen. One is the market cost can be uh, can affect your um, can be affected by the purchase order cost. If you manually set your your market cost, it will go ahead and use that market cost when you're purchasing these products when you're creating an order from that specific supplier. 
So what this means basically is that, let's say you, you order 10 items and you select supplier A. Well, supplier A is gonna have one set of costs. Now, if you, at the top of the PO, you say, well, I'm gonna go and buy this from supplier B instead. It will reapply market costs accordingly based on the supplier B market costs. So this is going to maintain all of the costs and appropriately put the, the cost in when submitting your purchase order to any given supplier. Now this market cost information is, uh, is pulled from one of three areas. One, it's gonna pull it from the market cost that you just entered, or it's gonna pull it from the let me go back one screen here. It's gonna pull it from the last cost. And if there's no market cost and or there's no last cost, it's gonna pull it from the average cost field. And that's where it's gonna get fulfill in that cost number. So even if you're slow to adding market costs in for your suppliers, it's still gonna put a cost in based on what's in your inventory. Beginning with market cost, then if market cost is zeroed out, it'll go to last cost. If that doesn't have a figure, it'll go to the average cost. And that's how it'll apply these different costs to each purchase order. Okay, so what's that look like? Well, let's look at, uh, we can look at this on the left-hand side of the screen. In the image, we have three of the same pro, um, orders, same exact items on part number uh, one and two, or lines one and two, but we've got different suppliers. You know, if you don't put a supplier in initially when you create it, it's just going to pull that from the market cost in your inventory. If you add a supplier A in this case, it recalculates and now it's going to put the cost in from supplier A. And if you change that again from supplier A to supplier B, it will yet set another set of costs based on what those market costs have been set at for that particular supplier. Now, you also have a feature that's in your system. If you go ahead and pull up a purchase order that doesn't have a supplier associated with it, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna split the suggested order into purchase orders for the lowest cost suppliers, favoring the lowest cost suppliers? And yes, you can do this. So if you go ahead and just pull up a, uh, a purchase order that does not have a supplier associated with it, it will, give you the option to split that into multiple POs based on who has the lowest price. All right, well now that concludes most of the new features for the purchase order, the note fields and, and emailing and, and such. Uh, bonus material, so this is a bonus slide I have for you. And the reason why I put this here is because a lot of you don't realize that you can actually you actually have a capability to do a remote stock check at your particular uh, warehouse. At this point, this feature is available for Ace Hardware, True Value, Do It Best, and Oracle warehouses. More suppliers will be added as uh, these suppliers offer this functionality. It does require a real-time API or application programming interface that we have to write to that basically pings their warehouse and says, how many do you have on hand? And this is a in some cases, real time, some cases updated every hour, some cases every 24 hours. Whatever information we can get, we'll, we'll try to get it. Stock check feature is just activated through pressing the F7 button on the bottom of the screen when you're in modules inventory, uh, PO, and invoice and quote. Now, also, in addition, when you have a purchase order that's that has one of these suppliers that supports this uh, stock check feature, it will give you the ability to break that out and to bubble all the supplier, all the out of stock items on the top part of the purchase order. In the middle part, you'll have partial stock available. And then on the bottom portion, you'll have all stock available. This is a tremendous function and feature because now it will, it, this can greatly reduce your ordering time because you can basically scrape all the out of stock right off that PO, just with the click of a button, you just highlight all those items, hit F3, delete, and now you send the order in of what items are gonna be fulfilled. 
then you just run another suggested report or report for a different supplier and it'll capture all those items that you just deleted because supplier was out of stock. So it's a great time saver. Do use this feature. If you don't, you should start using it. And and good luck with all your uh, with all your PO features in, in the notes in, in Paladin. If you have any trouble setting that up, just call our service. We can help you with that. So as far as that concludes our, our webinar for today, but we do have one coming up uh, in another week, we have, the, or two weeks away, optimizing our invoice tab. So the invoice store tab under the setup is a very powerful set of options. And there are many different levers and knobs and dials you can tweak and twist and shape to really accommodate your processes, procedures, and best practices. So I would uh, definitely attend that webinar. And if you don't get an opportunity to see it live, please watch it after the fact. As always, there's information on the screen. I'm looking at the questions. I don't see any questions at this point. So thank you again for attending today. You can see the various resources we have that you can go to on our website, Retail Science, find out what's trending. The webinars, you can rewatch webinars like this. We also have a new set of training videos you need to check out. They're great for new hires. And of course, our store as well that you can go to and you can get to all that from our main website, paladinpointofsale.com. Again, my name is Charles Owen. I greatly appreciate you guys all attending. Thanks for tuning in. God bless. And until next time, see you later.